Hello everyone, this is Absar Ali. So in this video, we're gonna see how APM uh, works internally and what are the architecture of that and what are the modules available within APM server and how client and server architecture works in, in uh, APM. Okay, so let's get started. So if you see here, I do have a, a Android emulator, all right? And I already opened APM desktop. I installed uh, in, in my system APM desktop. And here what I'll be doing, I'll just create a server, okay? APM server, uh, which will uh, which will run on local host or maybe 00 is also a local host and port number 4723. And let's uh, start the server. So once I start the server, it says, welcome to APM and the version and this is the server is uh, up and running apm uh, rest uh, http interface so this is a rest api kind of so whatever the rest api that uh, uh, you know uh, you you can send a rest api to this uh, endpoint and that will work all right so yeah so using postman also you can send your request to this particular uh, you can say this particular uh, 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 address, the endpoint, all right? So we'll see using Postman also, let's see. So you can see this is my Postman and I do have a post uh, API call here, all right? And this is localhost 4723 WD hub session. So this is the endpoint to uh, create a session, right? And in the body part, I have provided a desired capability of app. One app is already present, the APK file that I want to install in this uh, emulator and app activity, app package, etc. is there. So uh, the meaning of uh, showing this is um, like without any programming language also, you can uh, interact with the uh, APM server and you can run uh, the app on, on uh, uh, devices, right? So th this is basically a, a REST API, all right? So if I send here, you can see something happens here in the, in, in the uh, APM console, all right? So what happened, we'll uh, see one by one. So basically it is uh, installing that app, the APK file, whatever we provided here. And based on app activity and app package, it will install and open that particular app. All right. So just wait for some second, I think. Once it will install, it will open up that app here in this uh, device. All right, so you can see something opened here. We'll talk about this as well. What What is this uh, blank screen that opened up first? All right, and then it will open the app. All right, so if I go to this server here uh, quickly, okay, what? It does. So we know when I uh, uh, open the APM desktop, it was only this part, right? Listen, uh, sorry, the listener was started on this particular 4723 uh, port number. And then after that, we had uh, this session request, post session request with a desired capability from Postman, all right? Maybe from any programming language you can do any uh, you can use your Java or uh, C sharp or Python bindings uh, in your Eclipse ID or maybe IntelliJ ID. And this is the same thing will happen with the APM server. So this is a standalone server, right? Maybe this server will uh, will be in, in your local machine. Suppose you are running on your local machine uh, that uh, you, you have, uh, you know, uh, all the devices you, uh, connected with your local machine and you are trying to run everything locally and you have your own 
uh, device farm or something, or if you have a cloud-based like browser stack or source lab, so they also have in, in, in the AWS or their cloud uh, uh, platform, they, they do have this APM server run up and running. So instead of using this uh, local host 4723, you would be using their uh, URL to send these commands, this create session command you will be sending to their uh, you can say uh, their, uh, their uh, URLs all right so what happened here you can see first we sent this uh, session request then it converted everything into JSON aware protocol all right so this is the one uh, we'll see uh, in detail uh, it first converted everything into JSON aware protocol so that the best driver can understand those and can forward it to the uh, other drivers all right then after that we you do have uh, uh, you can see here session is created by the best driver and after that uh, ui automator 2 comes into picture and it will check with the adb will check uh, you know multiple things whether uh, SD, Android SDK is installed or not, whether what other version is uh, present, and then it will uh, try to find out the list of uh, devices present uh, and it's connected. So based on that, it will get the device versions, etc. Uh, then uh, it will uh, push a APK file to the device one. Uh, settings uh, apk file so if you see in the device if i just uh, minimize this app so you'll see there's something called apm settings so this apk file uh, basically communicate between your application and the device with the adv all right so this uh, apm setting app is being sent uh, by this adv command all right io.apm so where this apk file is present it is present in in your uh, apm server directory or in the dependency you will see where this file is present this apk all right uh, yeah and then uh, it will install and it will check uh, whether this is uh, uh, signed or not so this is uh, one more important thing that uh, everything that you want to automate it should be signed version uh, so uh, it should be debuggable. So once your APK file uh, you want to automate, right? You may, you need to make sure it's not a release version. It should be uh, a rewritable kind of, uh, it should be uh, reassignable, right? You need to sign in again, okay? If your app is logged, that means you are not able to sign in, then uh, you will not be able to automate that app. All right, so you need to uh, make sure your app is uh, debuggable. All right, so you need to use a debug version. So you need to ask to your developer that they will give you a debug version of APK or IPFI, not the release version. All right, then uh, getting a package info of a UI Automator 2 server. So another thing that will be installed. Uh, io.apm ui automator to server that will be installed in your machine as well all right so that server will install uh, in, in your app so with with that server uh, your command whatever your command you send from postman or maybe from any programming language so that will communicate with your application using this uh, ui automator to uh, server or the framework you uh, uh, that will uh, talk to the application directly all right so then it will check its uh, sign in thing and yeah so it will just check the app signer it will sign apk signer is there for android so it will sign that app all right and it will uh, yeah so you can see it will generate some certificates uh, etc once it's uh, being signed then after that, it will install this uh, io.apm.uiautomator2server.test. So this is another APK file that is present in here. You can see uh, in this directory, uh, that APK file is present. 
so that will be installed all right and signed and then installed uh, then after that it will install your uh, apk file all right so your apk file also need to be signed then installed okay so once that is being done uh, the, then another thing the ui automator 2 will do instrumentation target of this uh, is available or not so this is uh, another package that is available or not uh, this is a package within ui automator 2 server so it will check whether it's available or not and then it will do port forwarding all right forwarding ui automator 2 server port 67902820 so this is uh, the port forwarding happen uh, into your device so you can see here using adb command uh, your emulator this is the device name and it will forward your port 8200 okay to tcp uh, 6790 so this is a port forwarding happen once that port forwarding happen then uh, your apk file will open up your uh, your device uh, sorry your app will inst uh, install and open up so this is your app it will open up after that all right so yeah so this is how it works uh, based on the yeah, it will check uh, your app, then it will check your uh, app activity and app package. Uh, based on that, using ADB command, it will open up your app, etc. All right, so let's uh, see uh, how things works in, and what are the different components available to run those. So you, if you want to check where your APM is installed, so you need to type this which apm so it will give you uh, the directory where your apm is being installed so make sure your apm is being installed in your machine using an uh, npm install or something this uh, should be available globally all right so just check this uh, directory then navigate to this particular directory all right so once you navigate to that directory uh, you will see uh, there are a couple of folders available like bin library node modules etc all right so this bin uh, uh, this uh, library so these are uh, the important things that will run your apm server so if you see this welcome to apm etc so these are coming from here uh, this particular apm directory and this is a uh, uh, apm server right so that works and within the node module you will see uh, there are a lot of dependency available so basically apm it uses a uh, different different uh, third party frameworks uh, inside the apm like ui automator 2 xqi test uh, then uh, you know flutter Device, uh, drivers etc so those are the third party drivers so if you see here adb adb is from android right similarly idb is for ios flutter driver fake driver espresso driver chrome driver okay so base apm based driver android driver so these are the drivers uh, that the third party driver it uh, it uses here all right and the ui automator 2 uh driver and ui automator to server so these are the third party servers or third party apk file or the dependency or the library that is being used in apm to you know perform automation on on the application all right so let's see uh you can see here the we do have a different different uh drivers like uh you can see apm mac driver apm ios uh, simulator apm ios driver etc all right flutter driver fake driver espresso driver we have a chrome driver base driver and android driver etc all right and also we do have windows driver and apm web driver as in so this is also important thing in ios how the interaction happens so we'll see those things later on and we, we do have a uh, most important thing for iOS um, automation is uh, XQI test driver. 
and this is UI engine driver also is there, all right? So let's uh, see uh, in, in detail of, of each, each of the package, each of the module, how it works. Okay, coming to this uh, architecture here, uh, this is web driver script where we use Postman, but you can use any of your Java language, your uh, JavaScript, Python, etc. Then it will communicate with the APM server where it will check whether it's uh, Android or iOS based on that it will uh, you know, run XUI test or UI automated test based on your uh, desired capability and it will run on your device. So this thing, uh, how it happens, as we saw already, there were a lot of dependency here, a lot of drivers available. So how exactly things works? So let's just check that. So as we saw, this is the iOS package, Selenium package, this is core package. So in the core, APM, APM Express, APM Best driver is there, APM Doctor. APM Doctor is uh, something as a different tool that will check your system requirement, uh, whether you have all the uh, dependencies, all the uh, libraries, all the tools available or not for running your APM tests, all right? So we, we do have utility package for Android. So in this particular video, we'll be just uh, seeing more into Android packages and end-to-end -end flow, how it works. So Android package has APM Android driver, APM ADB, APM Android bootstrap, APM UI automator, UI automator 2, uh, cell Android. Okay, so these are the uh, things. So let's uh, see uh, each of them. APM module. So what is APM module? Uh, when we run your uh, app, uh, sorry, uh, APM server, all right? So this, this, this is the one. So when we run the APM server, right? So this will take care, the APM module will take care of that. And what else it will do? It will check whether node version is, uh, Better than five or CLI argument check. It will check all the CLI content. Uh, you can see no non-default server arguments. So this will check these uh, other things first. All right, and check for deprecation and mutual exclusions. Put uh, logging together. So these logs are uh, it will also put together. Initiate APM driver and it will initiate APM driver first. All right, so then that APM driver, uh, extend base driver actually. So that APM driver will extend base driver and the base driver will decide and assign the iOS, Android or Freq driver to the session. All right, then create or delete the APM session. So the APM module will create or delete the APM session, start base server, so it will start the best server, APM Express uh, module is being used for that and passes routes uh, given by driver. So these are the main important things uh, the APM module uh, works. Then APM Express, so what is the APM Express? It's part of APM based driver and uh, starts Express server, uh, server is being started by this APM Express. So we do have Express JS. that is, uh, you know, uh, if you uh, know about a little bit about the uh, REST API development using Java, JavaScript, uh, sorry, JavaScript. And in that you will see a library called Express JS. So Express JS will, uh, using the Express JS, you can create uh, REST APIs, get, post, you know, request. API requests you can create. So this is the same uh, uh, Express server that is being used. Uh, you can say Express is being used uh, to create HTTP uh, server. This is the this is the one. All right. And initializes routes from APM driver and timeout handling uh, being handled by the APM Express and connects a request or response event to loggers. So these loggers, uh, we, we get all the loggers and it will connect that request and response and so in here in the logs, all right? And the mobile JSON wire protocol. So if you see here, here we'll see the mobile JSON wire protocol in the APM server, right? So when it uh, send the APM uh, HTTP request first, 
when we sent the request from postman okay it was http request because we only sent a http request there and after that that http request is being converted into a json wire protocol mobile json wire protocol uh, it's a, a different a protocol is being used to communicate between you know ui automator 2 or maybe uh, with the xui test for android or ios all right so it converts uh, that http to uh, mobile json wire protocol all right then uh, it it provide list of apm commands as well and subclass by drivers that will use the protocol kind of middleware between the client and driver so yeah as i said it's a, a middleware between the client and the driver handle json wire protocol proxy for driver contains error classes for all type of errors sanitizes error responses uh, unwraps params to commands check the required params and validate parameters etc so you can also check uh, in in here uh, if you want to know more about here you can just check uh, the json wire protocol all right uh, here you should see uh, should see in the base apm based driver then go to that within that you will see json wire protocol proxy and json wire protocol status so yeah you can just check that how it works how it converts everything into uh, uh, json wire protocol based uh, objects all right and this is the converter so yeah you can explore more about this uh, if you go into this apm based driver and you can also uh, check more about the base driver commands etc all right so i'm not gonna deep dive into this uh, in this particular video so this is uh, just overview uh, you can go ahead and check uh, those information about the json wire protocol all right so yeah, so it checks the required parameter and validate the parameters, et cetera, all right? And then APM based driver, you saw the APM based driver just now we saw in here, what it does, uh, designed to have a single testing session per instantiation, contains uh, constraints on caps, platform name has to be present for it because it will decide which uh, driver it, uh, it, it, it will instantiate, whether iOS, Android, all right, so platform name has to be present. Validates the capabilities, whatever the desired capability that you sent uh, in, in your post request, it will check those and validate those as well. And runs the chain of promise, promised commands with a single concurrency, handle session, restart, handle swipe options. All right, so the swipe uh, options, it will also uh, handle export class uh, device setting to manage the device settings gate update etc contain the basic commands to find elements create or delete session handle timeouts set or update device settings provide helper method for commands etc it will take care of these are the things like finding element create or delete sessions okay handle timeout so you can see within this uh, best driver all the commands available here okay execute command find images commands all right uh, these are defined the commands sessions settings commands all right so these are the uh, commands and the timeouts all right so these are the uh, commands available for from the base driver all right yeah create delete sessions etc so those are available from base driver Okay, so this is the flow diagram, how it works, like APM, JSON wire protocol uh, from, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, from HTTP request, it will convert everything into JSON wire protocol in the best driver. Then after that best driver, it will uh, check which uh, driver in need to instantiate, whether it's a UI automator, whether it's a XY test or Mac driver, etc. So based on that, it will uh, check if it is UI automator, if it is Android, it will go, uh, with uh, UI Automator 2 driver, ADB, then Android driver, and then pushes uh, settings APK 
two device as we already saw uh, there will be one uh, apk file uh, this settings ap apk uh, here as we saw already so this will be installed here and it will sign in all right then uh, it, it will install the uh, ui automator to server and then sign the certificate for uh, ui automator to apk so ui automator to apk also present it within here if you check okay this base, base driver will decide which driver in to select so suppose if you have given android then it will go ahead and check for a ui automator to here all right and and it will run the server first ui automator to server and it will install two apk files so these are the two apk file present uh, within this uh, folder and it will be installed in in your uh, device uh, your android devices right so after that is being installed your uh, the server will be uh, up and running then uh, it will instantiate of uh, the ui automator to driver and a lot of commands available uh, from ui automator to a general command a screenshot touch viewport find element uh, battery alert action so these are the commands and uh, a lot of uh, you know, sub commands available within that you can check as well right so this thing will work in in uh, after this uh, instantiation of ui automator to apk and uh, running on the server then run ui automator server on the device using default available port apk signer it will sign uh, this apm ui automator to server debug android test dot apk then it will check instrumentation target of this particular uh, ui automator server all right and then it will uh, port forward it will happen port forward you, you can check in here as well port forward how it happened okay it will check a lot of things here then if you go to the port forwarding okay the settings uh, i io.apm.settings so this is one apk as i said it will install first then it will check for uh, the sign uh, yeah uh, the certification or this sign in apk signer uh, it will sign the app all right then after that uh, it will port forward here you can see ui automator to server port uh, 6790 to uh, it will forward the port all right so here using adb command it is being forwarded like this adb minus p 5037 minus s emulator uh, emu uh, the device name then forward tcp from 8200 to tcp 6790 so once the ui automator to server port is being forwarded to the device uh, port available device port right so once that is being forwarded then everything will work uh, uh, like installation of the apk file uh, the uh, uh, aut file application under test then it will be able to communicate with the uh, it, you, with your application right so then it will uh, do the normal uh, command that whatever you have sent uh, it will open the uh, app activities or uh, you, yeah uh, app activity or if you want to click something then it will perform those operations as well after this port forward thing happened so if i see uh, here android ui automator uh, this works like this json where protocol is there apm server request goes to ui automator then ui automator request or bootstrap this is the ui automator but if you are using ui automator 2 as i uh, said uh, it will uh, be using uh, the two apk file from here ui automator 2 server okay apk this two apk file will be installed in your machine then it will do port forwarding uh, adb minus p this thing and after that uh, your apk file the application under test will be able to communicate with uh, ui automator 2 server all right and that server uh, is being communicated with the uh, android driver here in in, in the uh, or base driver 
and that base driver will communicate with the JSONware protocol and the JSONware protocol will communicate with the HTTP server and the HTTP server that will communicate with the, your uh, language binding or maybe uh, the REST API. All right, so this is how whole scenario works. And uh, coming to this APM Android driver, uh, how uh, what it does, if similar to APM iOS driver, so it's similar with the iOS driver, it can run standalone server and automates native hybrid and mobile web apps on emulator simulators and real devices, takes care of installing Android packages to the devices and runs, uh, it, it runs Chrome driver session if you require, if you are running a mobile web session, then it will run the Chrome driver session, contains a more specific sets of capability constraint, uses APM ADB to talk to emulator, simulator or real devices. You and uh, it uses APM Android Bootstrap to execute the actual commands or maybe uh, the two uh, APK file, as I said, uh, it really uses that for UI Automator 2, all right? And contains a helper to figure out which web view belong to which app package, vice versa. So it will figure out that as well. APM ADB, this is another, uh, you can say dependency, or uh, sorry. So it, it, it's a wrapper around the ADB, Android Debug uh, Bridge. Uh, contains a bunch of commands that are basically just RPC to the ADB binary. Uh, houses a uh, jar file to run for spe special use cases like signing, verifying apps, or moving manifest, etc. So this is uh, the most important thing. Uh, you, you need to have a debuggable uh, app, APK or IPA file. You should not use a released version. You should use debug version your APK or IPA file so that uh, you know ADB can um, uh, change or it, it can uh, sign your app so that uh, it can run on on your real device or 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 on your uh, emulator or simulator. So you need to ask your developer to give you a, a debug build instead of the release build. All right allow a special mobile specific emulator commands that are not related to the web driver protocols like locking the screen press a back button so these are the device specific uh, commands lock the screen press the back button so these are coming from the adb all right set uh, or get wi-fi state capture locks uh, log uh, log cache. so these are the device specific it's not nothing related to your app all right, so your app having certain, you know, uh, elements, Android element or iOS elements. So we normally perform on those elements, uh, all the uh, automation tasks. But if you want to communicate with your uh, mobile, your Android mobile or iOS mobile, so suppose back button or a home button, etc. So this is uh, taken care of by ADB command, okay? handles emulator or simulator actions etc then what is the apm android bootstrap so this is another as a jar file uh, that is coming from ui automator all right and it builds a apm bootstrap jar that contains logic to execute command counterpart to apm auto and uh, once started it creates a web socket connection to the device so it create a web socket connection uh, with the device all right so it can uh, seamlessly uh, communicate with the device and, and the server uh, that we'll have with a UI automator. So these are the application provider. Uh, these are the, uh, you can say the flow, uh, Selenium command, then APM ADB, then APM Android Bootstrap, then Java code using Android UI automator framework. So this is only for UI automator, right? And UI automator, starts and shut down UI automator server given by APM Android Bootstrap jar build. Command flow like uh, APM Android Bootstrap, this is the jar, it will start and APM UI automator start, APM ADB then install Bootstrap, etc. So this is the flow uh, that works, all right. Then APM Android IMI. So it allows to send receive Unicode character from or to the Android device 
and encode text into UTF-7, send, sends it to the device and records it as a Unicode used by APM Android driver. So it is uh, being used by APM driver. So you can also check a lot of information in the uh, APM desktop server or if you're running from command line as well, you can see all those logs and you can uh, run your server with a debug uh, mode, all right? So you, you can say uh, debug mode true, then you will see all the logs uh, and you can uh, get to know how internally uh, everything works uh, one by one, all right? The ADV, then WD proxy, how it the proxy works, etc. So once the uh, the port forwarding happened, it, it works based on the proxy, web driver proxies here, right? Okay, so the next thing uh, we will see uh, iOS XQI test for iOS 1, uh, we'll, we'll see in the next video, okay? If you have any questions uh, or any doubts, you can also comment in the comment section below and uh, please like and subscribe and share this video, all right? So see you in the next uh, video and bye for now.